What's up everybody, Straw Hats are cool here, and we are back again with another video. Today we are going to be hopping on the rank simulator and trying out a more unique build for the OP07 Rob Lucci build. Rather than running the traditional CP9 build utilizing new cards like the Spandine from EB01, as well as some of the new 2k counters we got in the CT CP typing, um, we're going to be trying out a more navy focused build running the brand new searcher over the spandom and seeing how we do so before we get into today's video as always thank you so much to everyone who's been supporting me in the channel i hope you all are enjoying the consistent gameplay content we're putting out here on the channel gonna try and keep up this schedule um, so far i've been able to do it relatively easily but hopefully we will be able to maintain this as I go into the next school year. Another little announcement is I talked about starting to do a stream on Thursdays at my locals, but I think I'm actually going to start and try and start doing it on my Monday night locals instead. So keep your eye out for that next Monday. I'm hoping to get that going. Still need to talk with my LGS just to confirm that they're okay with me doing it, but it should be a pretty good time and I hope uh, we can get that set up and you all look forward to that. Um, we do have a Discord. If you're not in that, link for it will be down in the video description. Uh, we talk about the card game and the market in general. Uh, so if that sounds like fun to you, uh, we've got a link for that down in the video description. And with OP07 right around the corner, I'm hoping to do a giveaway for some packs or something if I'm able to get my hands on them. So keep your eye out for that as well. And lastly, if you plan on buying any cards off of TCG Player, do consider using my affiliate link, which will be down in the video description. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into the deck breakdown. So this is a new leader from OP07. It is a mono black leader standard, 5,000 power, five life for a mono colored leader. And it has a win attacking effect that states you may trash the top two cards of your deck and if you do so, you may give up to one of your opponent's characters minus one cost for the turn. So, um, the when attacking effect, very reminiscent of the blue-black Sakazuki leader. When attacking, we get to give minus one to the cost of one of our opponent's characters. However, we do have to trash two cards from the top of our deck. Um, so initially when this leader was released, I feel like it was a bit underwhelming, like it was solid as a mono-black leader. But I think Sakazuki just did more. But now with Sakazuki no longer in the game as he is now banned as of the release of OP07, I think that gives Rob Lucci a lot more time to shine in the current format as one of the best leaders in black. I still think it's up for debate which leader is best in black. I think that Gecko Moria is still very strong in the OP07 format. And I even think Smoker has some potential... Um, moving forward especially once we get our hands on some of those new starter decks we've got the starter deck smoker which should be releasing sometime I believe in october november ish and that will have support for the smoker which is looking pretty solid um but that's our leader that's what he does just very generic cost reduction is very good for black as we have cost based removal in our deck first card we've got here is the brook this is a card which was released in EB01. Three cost, 4,000 power with 1,000 counter, and an on play and when attacking effect that states we can give up to one of our opponent's characters minus one cost for the turn, and then we can KO up to one of our opponent's characters with a cost of zero. So, a uh, very powerful card, and being a three cost does mean we're able to get it back off of Rebecca, which was one of the key combos with this card in particular. And because this card does have a win attacking effect as well, it is often a card your opponent is going to be prioritizing to get rid of. This is not something they want to stick around on your board as it can get you additional value and oftentimes just feels like free removal with its effect. And uh, it's pretty nice because it's a low cost character and it is 4000 power which means that red purple law on its own cannot get rid of this card they are still going to need some form of power reduction which is one of the things that makes this card really nice if your opponent spends one of their gordons or rise max to get rid of the brook i think you're pretty happy about that as they're not using it to get rid of 
one of your bigger bodies later in the game. Next up, we've got T-Bone running three copies of this one. It's a 2k counter, 5 cost, 5,000 power, and an on-play effect which states we can KO up to one of our opponent's 2 cost or lower characters. So we're not going to play it out very often. It is poorly statted at 5 cost, 5,000 power, but it is also a 2k counter and extra mo removal in a pinch, which is pretty nice. Uh, because we are running the navy build, this is searchable as well. And being a 5 cost does mean we are able to grab it back with our Rebecca as well. Running two copies of the 4 cost Kuzan, 5,000 power on play draw card. And when attacking, we get to give one of our opponent's characters minus 4 to their cost. Against a lot of decks, this is another card that is um, your opponent's going to want to remove on site as that minus 4 cost is pretty powerful um, allowing us to very easily ko higher costed characters especially if you play this on like a six or seven dawn turn before typically before your opponent's going to want to play something big this card is extremely important to get rid of as someone who's been playing a lot of red purple luffy recently um this card has been the bane of my existence. If my opponent plays this before I'm going into like my Newgate turn, it really sucks because I don't usually have a good way to get rid of it. So just a very good card to play before your opponent drops their top end. And it replaces itself, so even if your opponent removed it, you know, you still got some value out of it, which is a big bonus as well. Running four copies of Suru, probably just the best 2k counter in black. Um, you're one cost, zero power, 2k counter, and on play we get to give minus two to the cost of something. So typically we don't want to play this from our hand as it is one of our 2k counters. We want to save this for being defensive, um, but in a pinch we can play it out to give minus two cost to something, bring it within range of one of our removal effects. But one of the best parts about this card is that after we've countered it with it, we can bring it back off of our Gecko Moria, alongside something like a Rob Lucci or even a Rebecca Brook combo. Um, and then we can get the cost reduction of that, the, the Suru, even after we've used it as a counter, which is really quite nice. Two copies of the Borsalino, four cost, 5,000 power, 1k counter. It's a blocker and during our opponent's turn, it gets an additional 1,000 power, making it a 6,000 power character on our opponent's turn, as well as having the bonus that it cannot be KO'd by effects. And that last part there, I think is the main reason we're playing this card right now with Sakazuki no longer in the format. Um, Blue is a lot less prevalent, and blue is really the only color that had a very nice way of dealing with the Borsalino through their bottom decking effects. So with a drop in blue's playability after Sakazuki's banning, the protection from KO effects is a lot stronger. So that's the reason we're running two copies of the Borsalino. Running two copies of the Isho from OP03. This is a 8 cost 9,000 power character with two effects. It's got a Dawn times one effect on your turn. All your opponents get minus three to their cost. So if this is able to stick, that AOE cost reduction is absolutely incredible, especially combined with something like a Rob Lucci, for example, which is able to KO a two cost and a one cost. With this on the board, you're now hitting a five cost and a four cost just by putting a Dawn on your Isho. But that's not the main reason we're playing this card. The main reason we're playing this card is for its on play effect, which states that if your opponent has six or more cards in their hand, they trash two cards from their hand. So this is very similar to the four cost blocker law in purple. Um, but people are a little bit less familiar with Isho. It hasn't really seen any play since OP03, if my memory is serving me correctly. Um, but against decks like specifically the Black, Yellow, Luffy, Isho is a very powerful card to play on curve to help get some cards out of their hand. We often don't want to be attacking with their leader, which is what makes Black, Yellow, Luffy arguably Rob Lucci's worst matchup in the current meta. But we're playing the Isho to try and help with that, and because we are running the Navy build, it is searchable, so we're able to find this card a little bit more consistently. Speaking of searchable, this is brand new, our searcher of the deck, 2 cost, 3000 power with 1k counter. We get a look at the top 3 cards for navy, and then the remaining cards go to the trash. So really nice for helping us fill our trash as well. 
in combination with our leader effect, putting two cards in the trash from most turns. Brandon just being able to fuel our trash a little bit faster is really nice so that hopefully we can have a powerful Gecko Moria play once we get later into the game. Next up is arguably the best card in black right now, the 5 con 6000 power Sabo with 1k counter. It's a blocker and the on play effect allows you to draw two trash too. So again, filtering out our hand as well as just putting more cards in our trash. Uh, really nice if, for example, we don't have a Rob Lucci in trash, but we've got one in our hand. But we want it in our trash so that we can play it off our Gecko Moria on the following turn. Playing out Sabo fixes that problem. Being able to filter out some cards, get that Rob Lucci in the trash, maybe replacing it with a card that has counter instead. But I think the big thing about this card right now is that immunity to, uh, to KO effects for your whole board. Um, again, like we said with Borsalino, with Sakazuki gone, bottom deckings a lot less prevalent. There are still going to be decks like Boa Hancock and the Mono Blue Doflamingo running around, but those decks I don't think are tier 1, so you're probably going to see a bit less of those than you are a lot of the other decks. And with black just being one of the best colors in the game right now, you're going to run into quite a lot of black mirror matches, and so the KOing to Im the immunity to KO effects is extremely powerful here. Oftentimes in Black Mirror matches, it comes down to who has more Sabos in order to protect their board, um, which is a bit obnoxious, but that just goes to show the power of the Sabo. Running four copies of the Rebecca, another card that is just insanely good. I, Black just has too many really good cards between the Sabo, Rebecca, and Gecko Moria. Uh, four cost, zero power blocker, 1k counter. Most of us are probably familiar with this one. On play, we can return a three cost to seven cost black card from our black character card from our trash to our hand. And then we can play a three cost or lower from our hand. So we can grab back. A lot of the time it's going to be your Brooks or your Hina's. But you can also grab things back like your Sabos, your 2k T-Bone, um, just things like that. Later in the game, if you need some more counter in hand, you can grab back your Rob Lucci so that you can play it from hand to do some more removal. Just the, again, one of the best cards in black, just very versatile card. Um, you can play it back off of Gecko Moria being a four cost as well. Just absolutely insane. Later in the game though, one of your big plays with this card is just grabbing back that Sabo that we mentioned and just recurring that every turn so that you can get that immunity for your board that's what the black mirror comes down to a lot of the time play your rebecca into sabo um it's a nine dawn play but then your your rebecca's immune to ko effects your sabo's immune everything that's already on board's immune just a very powerful late game play running three copies of the four cost rob lucci another insane card uh four cost six thousand power and on play, you bottom deck three cards, no type restriction on this one, just any three cards. And then you get to KO a two cost or less and a one cost or less. So in combination with our leader effect, um, things like the Tempest Kick, the Stage, we can often remove two high costed characters with this. Just absolutely phenomenal card. And one of the key targets for the next card, which is going to be the Gecko Moria. I probably don't even need to talk about this one. We all know what it does. Uh, eight cost, 9,000 power. You grab back a four cost and a two cost from your trash. You play one active and the other one rested. So probably the most common targets for this are going to be the Rob Lucci and Helmeppo or a Suru. So playing out, um, you know, the Helmeppo or Suru to reduce the cost of one of your opponent's characters. Then the Rob Lucci to KO two of your opponent's characters. Um, if you were able to play the Gecko Moria on 9 or 10th Dawn, you could play a Tempest Kick or maybe even a Suru or something from your hand. And then if you got the stage out, the possibilities on what you can remove are endless. Another good combo we have though is doing maybe Rebecca Helmeppo. Uh, Rebecca grab back Brook and then playing Brook to KO something as well. So a little bit more defensive play, not building as much on board, but if we only need to remove one thing, can be a little bit of a better way to go about doing that. And again, if we've got a Tempest kicked or a stage out, uh, the card we're gonna be able to hit with Brook is even higher costed. 
uh, running three co or four copies of the Toshigi. Uh, two kit that hasn't seen a lot of play recently, but it is Navy searchable, which is why we're running it. Three cost, 4,000 power, 2k counter. Activate main, you can rest the card to give minus two cost to one of your opponent's characters. So pretty similar to a stage, just on a body this time. We can play this out in a pinch if we need to. Just let it sit there and stare at our opponent so we can use it to reduce the cost of something when we need it. Um, so yeah, it's just a pretty good card and being a three cost does mean we're able to grab it back with our Rebecca if we need it as well. Um, Hina, again, another card I'm sure most of us are familiar with just to, because of how prevalent it's been in black decks as of recently. Uh, three cost, 5,000 power on play. Give minus four to something's cost. You play this out. You can grab this back with the Rebecca, play it out for free. Uh, so you got a blocker, a 5k body, reduce the cost of something. Now you can play something like a Brook or a Luchi and remove one of your opponent's characters. El Meppo, just here is another really nice target to grab back off of the Gecko Moria, being able to give minus three to something's cost when we play it out. Absolutely incredible. Another new card from OPO7 here. This is the Tempest Kick. Um, it's basically great eruption, one cost, draw a card. Um, then if your trash has 10 or more cards, give up to one of your opponent's characters minus three cost and trigger KO up to one of your opponent's three cost or lower characters. One thing to note about this card is that you draw a card first, and then if your trash has 10 or more cards, you get the effect. If you have nine cards in trash and play this card, this card goes to the trash before it checks for 10 or more. So if this is the, if you've got nine cards in your trash and you play this, you will get the cost reduction part of this effect. So that's something very important to remember. You don't need to have 10 before you play it. If you've got nine, this is gonna be the 10th card in your trash. So you will get the cost reduction from that effect. Uh, so yeah, just basically great eruption. It replaces itself later in the game. It gives minus three to something's cost because of how much we're filling our trash due to trashing two with our leader effect. Very easy for this card to go online, but you're not going to have it active as early as you were with your great eruption as that one was always active. So if your opponent plays some annoying card on their second turn, you're not going to be able to use Tempest Kick to reduce the cost of that and remove it with something like a brook so a little bit more balance in that aspect but you are giving minus three costs so it is better in some ways as well and then the last card is we were running three copies of the any slobby um one of the things with this card is that even if you are running the CP bill, this card is still not searchable since it is world government type and not a type which includes CP in its name. Uh, but this card's really good. I'm only running it at three because once you have one, you really don't want to see it again. Uh, you could run it at four just because you really do want to see this card. But I've been okay running it at three. Two cost, activate main if your leader is CP. You give minus two to something's cost. So if we have this on the field, even if we've got nothing else out, between our leader and the stage, we're able to give minus three cost every single turn, which is incredible. And then we've also got the trigger effect to play this card, which is nice when it comes up. So that is the deck list. I don't think that this build is better than the CP build. Um, we've been having an okay amount of success with it, but I think it's just a little less consistent than the CP build and just you're running a little bit less of those really nice removal cards like the Kaku, not a card we have at our disposal in this build. We're kind of running the T-Bone as a replacement as well as being a 2k counter. The one card I really wanted to make room for in this deck but just couldn't seem to find out how to do it was the 8 cost Sabo from 07. Um, just with the combination of the stage and our leader effect, often being able to remove whatever we want with this card is really nice, um, but it's not searchable and I just couldn't find the room for it since I wanted to play the E show to try and help make that black yellow Luffy match up a little bit better. Um, I've been pretty happy with the list um, and we'll definitely take a look at the CP build here in the near future, but wanted to try something different um, and you know, this is where I landed. So let's go ahead, dive into some gameplay and see how we do. So again, 
for this video we're probably just going to do one or two games and then tomorrow on friday we will be back with some more gameplay with the deck and then we'll talk about how the deck performed at the end of that video but with all that said let's go ahead and hop right into the gameplay i'll see you there Alrighty, we are up against Trafalgar Law with the Navy Lucci. We got the stage in this hand, so I think we're going to keep it. Our hope now is that we can just draw into a Gecko Moria or a late game. Next turn, we'll probably just swing six and play out the stage. Opponent did choose to go second, which is what they definitely want to do. They don't want us going second. Our second curve is a lot better than our first curve, especially in this build. I think that is one of the reasons the CP build is probably just the better deck. The trash a Brook into 2k, no targets. Play out that stage. Isha's not super good in this matchup but we'll try and get some value out of it i think we'll just take this one there's the gecko moria we want to see now we need a way to get the luchi in the trash Clean out the bond clay we can just get rid of that here with the brook so i think we'll do that 2k and a blocker. Force them to use some of their cost or power reduction on the brook here. If they don't, we've got Hina, so we can probably out whatever they play next turn, but I'm sure they've got some way to get rid of the brook. Not a card you want to let stick on the field for sure. I do have quite a lot of cards in hand, however, so uh, we're definitely not out of the water yet. We don't have hardly any counter, just the Borsalino right now. If they start being super aggressive, we're going to be in a pretty bad spot, I think. They got the Gordon. What else are they going to do with that 6 on Play out the kid is good. And probably a 7k attack. Don't have I know the Zoro Joro. We take that one. 2k is good. And here I think we're just gonna have to hard play to Luchi, get rid of both things here so we can reduce the Zoro down. It's gonna really suck having to get rid of all of our our trash, but I think this is kind of where we're at right now. Porcelino, 2k, 2k. I think I want to leave the brook. Got another brook. Uh, no targets. Pretty nice getting able to clear their board there, but puts us back away from, you know, having a very strong Gecko Moria play since we had to put away three cards from our trash in order to get his effect off but we are controlling the board we still got three life one seven dawn for our opponent eight cards in hand still is a lot potentially could end up dropping down the isho here i'm gonna 2k out of that one don't want to go down to two because of the kid killer yeah i can get rid of our luchi makes sense Playing out. Still don't have counter, which is a bit of an issue. Playing out the kid killer. I think I'm just going to counter that one too. Um, we really don't have a good... I mean... We could Gecko 
grab back Suru Brook, which does, depending on what they do, we could clear their board actually. It's not terrible. Let's start with a 5k, use the effect. Put another gecko in the trash as well as the hill meppo. Meppo's a little better than the Suru. We'll just reduce the kid killer. Would've been really nice if we got a four cost Luchi in the trash there. I think we're just going to go six into the Kid Killer, force out a 2k, then we can just do this. Might actually be better to play the Brook as the active one, or the rested one. Try and get them to attack that. They want to bottom deck it, they still gonna have to use some form of power reduction. I think we'll play Helmeppo active, which might seem a bit odd. Well, if I play, eh, it's just better to play this active and that rested don't need the reduction there but force them to have an answer for the brook and they do just end up scooping it up there they could have answered the brook but i guess not confident they could live we did have another luchi there on our top life so uh, things went pretty good for us in that one we didn't curve out perfect and having to play the luchi early definitely hurts as we do want to fill our trash up as much as possible, but able to get the win there against the Red Purple Law. All right, in the Luchi Mir here, we're gonna to choose to go second. We've got the Gecko Moria, but we don't have a lot of other good plays, but we've got a Moria, so we're gonna keep it. We'll fill our trash and just have a good Moria, hopefully. They are playing the CP build, which Probably the better build for the deck, but we're trying something here. See what they do here on their 3 dawn turn. Might just be a 5-5 five five with the Spandam and Leader. They are going to do 6. I think we'll take that first hit. Get another Helmeppo. And they do have their stage, which is not what we want to see. I don't really want to play out anything here, so I'm just going to do a big swing and mill a couple cards. Another Gecko Moria is not what we want to see go in the trash, but it is what it is. Unfortunately, we don't have any way to get that back, being an 8 cost character. The Hina in the trash is good though. Nice target for our Rebecca if we need it. Another 6k attack. We will give them the T-Bone. And they're going to do the Khalifa to dig a little deeper into the deck. Filling up their trash. Got the Branu. Go ahead and see what we can grab off that. Get the Luchi in the trash, which is nice. Grab a T-Bone. And then just another big attack from us. Who's on in the trash as well? Building up a pretty solid trash on our end. We do want to be cautious of a potential Isho from them, so we might want to start countering out of some attacks here. We'll give them a Helmeppo, it's a good target for our Gecko Moria. Then probably give them a 2k e bone, and they are doing the Sabo. 
Giving them immunity from the KO effects is always strong. Got a brook now as well. Don't have anything I really want to play out here, unfortunately. Good play, Rebecca. Grab back the Kuzon, but then we're not getting any attacks off. Probably just get a free block. I don't think I totally hate developing the Kuzon. We'll see what they do here. Yeah, they do just block, but I think I still want to do that. And we'll just play out the Kuzon. Getting another Gecko Mori is good too. Not feeling too bad right now. They are able to play their Gecko Moria now. Just gonna be playing out the Sabo though. We're gonna be going to 10. And we answer the Sabo. We got minus three there. Brings it down to five. El Meppo brings it down to two. Yeah. I don't think we can get the Sabo as well, though. We'll counter with the El Meppo. And do I want to counter with the Brook as well? I think I'll take this one that's great so now i believe i can answer both and the 6k with the sapo okay we will counter that one so we can attack califa minus one on either because we go minus six so that bring it down to one we can get go bring back helmeppo luchi minus three so that's two and a one so that should work then we get to develop board and they give us a 2k for the califa we will Raw, get another one for next turn. And a 2k. We get to Gecko, grab back Luchi, active, Helmeppo rested. Helmeppo first on the Sabo, using the effect. Bottom deck, the events. Okay, so we are feeling pretty good on board right now. Really wish we had a stage out. Definitely makes the math on our end a lot easier. For responding if they have a potential gecko here. Yeah, they're going to be, looks like, probably clearing our gecko. Another Sabo, they get to answer our board very easily. Just to even just tapping the stage. They are bringing that down to five. So maybe not another Sabo here. I'm gonna be backing into our leader, reducing the Luchi down to three. I think I'm gonna take this one, get another Brook. We may not play the, well, actually we, we have the, we do have a Rebecca and trash that so we could do. If they play something big, we have, Re well, I don't know if that works. They're playing Brook out. So they are not playing anything big, uh, but they are going to be, looks like KOing the Gecko. 
Oh, they're gonna be KOing both of them. They're doing the Spandine play. Did I have another Lucian Trash? I didn't have another Lucian Trash, so I'm actually kind of okay with this. They're not developing anything crazy either, so... Pretty good. Pretty costly play as well. They're down a lot in hand size. The attack with the Cauliflower, just give him one of the Brooks. Another Rebecca is not bad either. We have the Lucci in hand though. Playing another Gecko just always feels so good. I believe we have another Helmeppo in the trash. Yes. So we can attack, reduce the Brook down to two. And then... Play out Gecko, Helmeppo, Luchi. Helmeppo here brings it down to one. That should clear. They're bored there. See if they want to give me a card for the Khalifa. They just let that one go. We could also attack into the Luchi. See what they decide to do. Deny them cards. And then we've still got another Luchi in hand. We'll have the event. Rebecca's. I think we're in a pretty good spot here. We're definitely winning on hand. They give us the Rebecca, which is really what we wanted here. So we get to play out. Gecko, grab back. Luchi. Elmepo. And then we get to clear their board. They've only got four cards in hand. They are head on life. They do have the stage out. Gonna be, looks like, getting rid of our gecko again. We'll see how many resources it costs them this time. I'm just gonna take this one, get the stage, just in case we need that. Seven Dawn, gonna be the Kaku to get rid of the Luchi there. Two Dawn left. Curious why they didn't just attach that to their, their character there. So, we can, Rebecca, Nina, Brooke, I guess, don't even need to do that. I'm going to poke a five and see what happens. To counter that one. I could just Tempest, but t saving the Tempest for something bigger seems better. I think I'm just going to play Luchi Borsellino here, actually. So we'll do another 5k reduce do a 6k a counter 
Brings that down to two. Lucci. Yes, Gecko, Gecko. Uh, T Bone. Get those both play out. The Borsellino. Can't get through this one with KO effects. Only three cards in hand. You are five. Do only have one 2K. Backing into our Lucci. Reducing the other Lucci. Do I just let it go? I imagine they've got like another Sabo here and they're just going to KO them both anyways. So I think I'm just going to let it go. But maybe I'm getting jabated. Just a Lucci. And maybe a Sabo. Just another Lucci. Clearing out our board. I can... Do like a Rebecca... Grab back Lucci play here. I got... Yeah, that'll work. See what we draw. Another stage is not helpful. Rebecca draw back Lucci. Do I need to play anything? I don't think so. So I could just play out the brook to have the brook. I don't like that. I'm just KOing them both anyways. Do Lucci. Our trash is very full. Do event. A Brook. And a Hina. Get those both. Put some more cards in the trash. No targets. They take. No board still, only two cards. No trigger. Can't get rid of the Borsalino. They could get rid of the Rebecca if they want. Black doesn't typically play Rush, but since they are playing CP, they could potentially have access to the Rush Lucci. Backing into the Brook for five, I will block. Gonna Kaku. Or the Brook. Another Kaku. Get rid of Lucci. Can I answer both of them again? That's just BMing though, because I just have game if I go 7 9, right? But could I? Probably. Got another Rebecca to grab back the Lucci. Yeah, I think I could if I wanted to, but we don't need to. We can go 7, they take. And then we go nine and they lose. So uh, GG's my opponent. They did have a lot of removal there in the end, but we just had card advantage and board advantage. They were just kind of fighting to keep some board. Um, able to get it there. We drew pretty exceptionally well, though. Overall, I think the CP build's probably still better. So don't take this as like, all right, Navy builds the way to go. Um, but when you draw well, it does feel very powerful. All right, so we are at the end of our first day trying out the Navy build for the Rob Lucci deck. 
We had a 60% win rate. We played 10 games total so far. Gonna play some more um, tomorrow and see how we do with it. Um, so at the end of our first day, we played against three Laws, two Luchis, two Boas, one Black Yellow Luffy, and one Boa Hancock. Um, now I did not record all the, these games, but I'll kind of quickly talk about them. So we did have the one game against Law, which you got to see in this video. Uh, Law is a pretty good matchup, I think, for the Rob Lucci. It's one of the reasons you want to play the deck. Um, one of the games I didn't record was incredibly close, and I do think I just got a little bit lucky, and that's how I got that one. But the other two were very clean wins on our part. Um, there was also the game against Rob Lucci in today's video, which you got to see. I think we just established a very dominant position in that game, and it was pretty clean once we were able to start dropping our Gecko Morias. Uh, the loss I had against Rob Lucci, I believe, was the first game I played with the deck. So, still kind of getting a feel for it. I definitely think I played incorrectly um, in the first couple games, which we'll talk about. Um, but my opponent also had, like, three Sabos in that game, so I just wasn't able to do anything a lot of the game, which was real unfortunate. The game was very close. Um, it came down to both of us basically just playing Rebecca's and Sabo's, but my opponent was a little bit on ahead on board prior to that, so able to uh, my opponent was able to squeak out the win in that one. Uh, two games against the Boa, the win was a really solid win. Uh, didn't even feel particularly close. Um, we were able to remove a Mihawk and a Ten Drop Kaido with ease. Uh, through the combination of uh, Ina and Stage and uh, the events, which was really nice. The loss was entirely my fault. Not used to playing against Blue again yet, and I walked right into a pudding pretty early, and the pudding put me into a terrible hand. Uh, in the second game, I was playing around pudding the entire game, so I was trying to always be at five or six cards in hand. Um, just so that putting would not be a good play for my opponent. Um, so that, that loss was entirely on me. Uh, Black Yellow Luffy, even with the E-Show and it being searchable, this is still just a really bad matchup. My opponent also drew really well. Uh, they played very aggressively, which typically I would think would say is incorrect. They played out a Flampe on their first turn, uh, and I think they were on zero life by turn three. Um, but they were able to stabilize from there. They had two geckos, all their sabos, and I just wasn't able to do anything about their board, unfortunately. And then Bonnie, probably the deck's best matchup. Not a lot Bonnie can do about it. They play big things, and we just get rid of them. They do have the uh, Basil Hawkins from 07, which is a really nice card against the black decks, but was not good enough in the end, and we were able to get that one pretty Pretty clean, convincing win as well. So that's the results for day one. Check back tomorrow and see how we do after we play a couple more games with the deck. Uh, so right now we're at about a 60% win rate, which is not bad, but we'd like it to be a little bit better. So we'll see if we can kind of turn things around a little bit tomorrow. Definitely took some getting used to playing this deck. Um, definitely, like I said, probably not the way to play the deck, but we will take a look at CP Lucci a little bit later in another video. But with all that said, that's going to wrap things up for today. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you all in the next video. Peace.